I'm Bradford from Atlas Sounds, Deer Hunter. We're at Aquarius Records, and uh, we're gonna check out some uh, some records and see what we find. Here's what I like: is the one dollar section. Giant Pecker, and their album Black Wire. Excuse me, gentlemen. Are you familiar with this Giant Pecker album? Okay, so this is, this is a keeper. This is something I might want to check out. So we've narrowed it down to six rad, hopefully, options. The first one, is the self-titled Sparks album. She was a wonder girl, a wonder girl. Sparks. I've never really listened to the earlier stuff. It's very, uh, very proto-glam. They have a tendency to pack a lot of ideas into one song, like hooks, and but they're kind of hidden. So you might listen to an entire Sparks song and be like, oh, this is medium. But then like the coda, or like the last part of the song is just this unbelievable, like gorgeous, like orchestrated hook with like, you know, electric pianos and Les Pauls and all that stuff. Another thing I love about Sparks is their music always has like a dark, angst kind of tinge to it. I think they're like seriously one of the most genius bands, and you can't beat that mustache, the Hitler stash. In this glass house. I think that there's nothing more appropriate to listen to outdoors in the sunshine, San Francisco weather, than Christian death. Well, it says here, Roar, which is like, you know, a really cool, like, tape, they were like a cool tape label. Legendary 1985 death rock cassette. Death rock cassette classic. I couldn't dance to this. No, no dancing. Perhaps the best thing I could do to sum up this music is read excerpts from the liner notes. A decision to drink or urinate. A, a man is dragging way. himself through a roll of barbed wire, ripping the flesh off his body. In front of the stage is a woman in black. She strokes her arms with fire. She eats fire. A woman's voice reigns throughout the room as she plays key. The world, a journey through pleasure and pain. I have three favorite groups of all times, all time, and that's uh, the B-52s from like, hometown reasons, like from Athens, and for like hometown heroes. Second is the Breeders, and uh, the third is uh, Stereo Lab. This song on this record, Love in Outer Space, Stereo Lab basically used the entire song and basically just kind of borrowed, borrowed the composition and kind of recontextualized it, which I've always appreciated about Stereo Lab because very few people can get away with that. You know, I mean, it's just, the thing that made me realize is that originality is not quite as important as just, uh, I don't know, making something your own, you know? It's kind of 
kind of like a, a more minimal, like stripped down summer record, not like a big band affair. It's really good. Really good. I would definitely rate this very highly. This record, All's Well, features uh, members of uh, This Heat. This is what they did after uh, This Heat. And it's a little bit less, uh, I think it's a little bit less stark. And the instrumentation is kind of uh, more uh, elaborate than This Heat. So much incredible. Very good music for the weather. I usually get these every year. This is the kind of music Moses, the uh, drummer and deer hunter, and I have always been huge, huge, huge fans of, of this kind of stuff. Like the ambient stuff on the, on the deer hunter record, Cryptograms, was inspired a lot by uh, this stuff. The thing I'm really excited about about this one, which I haven't heard yet, is that it is bookended by songs I haven't heard yet by Marcus Gutner. I mean, I'm a huge, huge fan of Marcus Gutner's work. Excellent night drive music. This is something I'm going to be listening to a lot. I was going to purchase a copy of this record for each member of Deer Hunter. And the idea was that I wanted them to all be listening to this record. To kind of, it was kind of, uh, this is where I kind of want to draw a lot of inspiration for our next record from. And the fact that it, it's, a lot of these songs are very, very pop. Uh, but they're, at the same time, they're collaged and there's a lot of t experimental tape stuff going on. So you'll have a four minute pop song that'll just dissolve into like tapes of saxophones, like collaged together, like, rah, 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 you know. And then it'll come out of that and then go into another like piano driven kind of like, drone kind of thing and then but there's just a lot of diversity on it and it really follows its own kind of um, improvised path this is the original cover which is kind of creepy the last track which i cannot pronounce because it's in french cherchant it's this really unexpected hypnotic kind of bulk acoustic song. There's a note about the lyrics. It says, note, the French words are there only to emphasize the bass. I like that. I like the fact that their lyrics are kind of incidental and only used to emphasize the bass. Uh, I think they're the most influential on me because um, they do stuff that is accessible, but they do it in their own way. They do it well. They do it really well. It's been a productive afternoon here at Aquarius. I uh, got reacquainted with some music that I have been familiar with in the past, and some new music that I hadn't gotten to hear yet. So that was fun. And most importantly, it's a gorgeous day. Thanks, Accelerator. They, hey, buddy. I love dogs. Man, this is some thing I'm gonna look at dogs. The words are only there. Hey, buddy. You're missing these dogs. These amazing dogs. You can't film them because you don't have contracts.